everybody. Welcome to my channel. I'm Laura. I hope everybody's had a wonderful new year. And like I said in my last video, it's time to get restarted, get back on track and start making videos and be accountable again. So this is my week one first video of 2024 about my weight loss journey. And if you want to know more about how I've come to get to the size I am, what my weight loss journey is all about. And you haven't watched last week's video, go back and watch that. It is long, sorry, but it gives you more of my history on where I've been with my weight, the ups and downs, the all over the place. So I did that video last week and this video is going to be about my week one, what happened on the scale, what all did I do, um, types of things. So this was the perfect year. If you were ever going to start doing any kind of quote unquote diet, this was the perfect year to do it because Monday was January 1st or January 1st fell on a Monday. However you want to say it. It was perfect. It was like, okay, there's no excuses. Let's get started. <laughs> so that's what I did. Not quote unquote a new year's resolution, but it just ended up that the first start on a Monday, easy to do. So let's do it. Um, I am going to do intermittent fasting um, through my journey. That's what I have found that works best for me. I know a lot of people have tried it, don't like it. A lot of people have done the low carb or keto or the, even the five small meals a day. I, I mean, I've got tons of friends who have actually lost weight lots of different ways. But this is what works best for me. It's where I feel my best and where I can see results. So that is why I intermittent fast. And I'm not a doctor. I know everybody throws out these disclaimers, so I'm just gonna say it here. This is just my story, my journey. I do not have any letters behind my name at all. <laughs> I'm just an average old Joe. So I am going to intermittent fast through this year, and I'm shooting hopefully to get I don't know, 40, 50 pounds off, somewhere around that area. I would like to get at least 40 pounds off. I feel really good when I'm around 160, 165. So that is always my ultimate goal. That's like what I'd like to hit. I'd love to see 155, but if that happens, we'll see. Um, so I'm shooting for 40 pounds. That, that's where I'd like to see myself land this sometime this year. I'm not in any rush to get there. I'm going to focus a lot more um, on probably strength training and getting back into running because I do have a lot of things coming up this year that I'd like to complete. So that is going to be a focus. So the scale might not move as quickly as it did a few years ago when I did this with the one mil a day. Um, I lost 57 pounds in 10 months. So this time it may not come off that fast. I'm okay with that as long as I can see results in other places. That scale's not going to determine who we are. It doesn't define us. So toning, measurements, you know, strength training, that's huge, especially for someone my age. I know I'm losing muscle mass. I'm losing bone density. I'm starting through premenopause. You know, all these things come with aging and I will be 52 this year. So I've got to start looking at doing more than just focused on weight loss. So that is where I'm going to be focusing my time and energy and effort this season of my life is on those areas. Um, if you want to come along for this journey, all the craziness, ups and downs, if you followed me for a while, you know I'm very transparent. As far as my weight goes, if I gain, I'm going to tell you, guess what? I'm up 10 pounds on that scale this week. You know, we went on a cruise and that's exactly what I did. And uh, how long it takes me to pull it off, you know? And it's just, this is my life. This is my weight. I've had issues with my weight my entire adult life. So this is just my story. Anyway, so week one, January 1st, I decided I was going to do ADF, alternate day fasting. And I'm going to do that through the month of January, except for the few days we're in Hawaii. Um, I'll, I might fast on the plane. I haven't really decided how that's going to go yet because that's a long flight and hopefully I can sleep some. But um, barring those few days, taking out those few days that we're gone for vacation, this month is going to be an ADF month. And this week I started that on January 1st and... I wasn't sure if I wanted to talk about this today or not, but it's on my heart and I've thought about it a lot this week, so must be something I need to talk about. 
and maybe this is because I'm starting fresh again. Guys, the reason I came back here was because y'all are my support. Honestly, you guys hold me accountable every week knowing I need to get up here and make a video and tell y'all how great I did or how poorly I did really keeps me accountable. What I have found to be the problem this week is that someone that I feel very close to in my life, you know, now I'm in a relationship, is not supporting me in this. So I'm having difficulty trying to figure out how to do me, basically, take care of myself when I have a partner that doesn't understand fasting at all. Um, all I have heard all week is all the negative things that most of us have heard if we do intermittent fasting, um, which has taken a toll on me this week. It has. We've had some really long in-depth conversations and I'm sure there's more to come. He is starting to come around a little bit, but I got to the point to where I didn't even want to take my before pictures in front of him. I waited till he left the house. Now, that's sad. I, I, I did not feel that I have the support I need from the person who's supposed to support me the most right now, right? So I'm saying this in case some of you have spouses or boyfriends or children that don't quite understand what you're doing. They think you're tearing up your body. They think that, you know, we're all crazy, whatever it is. Um, just remember, this is about us. This is about you doing something for yourself. It's not selfish. It's not selfish to take care of yourself. So I'm having to reiterate all those same things. And I'm having to have a lot of conversations, like I said, to the point to where eventually, hopefully he'll come on board and understand it. Or if he don't even understand it to the point of coming on board and doing it with me, at least the, the remarks will stop, you know, um, and maybe they will when the weight starts coming off. Like I, I know it will. Once I stay consistent, I know it will. Um, maybe once he sees the weights coming off and how much better I'm feeling and how much better I feel about myself, maybe things will level out. But right now, I don't have that support I need. I'm, I feel it. It bothers me. And it's been a struggle for me this week. It absolutely has because I'm like, how do I even go about making my videos now? How do I do this? How do I do that? You know, I'm having to schedule everything when he's not around or he's not over at the house or whatever, right? And... It's frustrating. It's a little added stress I did not think about when I decided to start doing this again. And something else is that it takes time to do these videos. You know, it takes time to edit. It takes time to record. And that's something else that I'm not having any support on. So there's a lot of things going on. And like I said, I wasn't even sure if I was going to talk about this or not. And I'm just putting it out there in case somebody else out there is feeling you're alone. You're not alone. I'm learning how to deal with this and work through this. And if nothing else, find you a support system on a Facebook outlet or another social media outlet. However, find you a support system because we need support when we're going through things. You guys are my support. And even with the first video, a, a lot of you that I used to converse with all last year, you know, I mean, right back to it. There you were you know, giving me comments and thanking me for coming back. Y'all have missed me, this, that, and the other. And it felt so good. You know, I was like, wow, this is my my family right here. My, my diet family, if you want to call it that. You know, you guys are my support team through this weight loss journey. So if I don't get it at home, I know I have it with y'all. And that's what I kept telling myself before I even got on here this morning. It's like, I do have a support team. I may not have y'all face to face, but I know I can reach out, I can put a video out, or I can send a message, or send whatever, you know, and you, you would answer back, just like I'm trying to answer you guys back, so just saying, if you're starting this, you're new, and you don't have that support system at home, find somewhere, because you need someone that you can pick up the phone and call, or text, or send a message to, leave a, a comment, you know, we need support. It's not easy going through any kind of journey, no matter what it is, but weight seems to be like one of the toughest. It really is. Okay, so I'm saying all that just to say, I don't know who needs it, but maybe somebody out there needs it because I sure have felt it this week bad. And 
I'm a little crazy today. I just got off the bus first day back to work in two and a half weeks and I'm all over the place. So forgive me, <laughs> but oh, the kids were a little wild this morning. Everybody's excited about going back to school and I just came home and decided, let me jump on and get this video done so we can move on with the day. So now that I've wasted half the video on, you know, support, <laughs> let's move on to what happened this week. Um, I asked Jeff what would be the best days for him to remember. That is a lot of the problem. He cannot remember what my schedule is on my fasting. You know, well, I don't know if you're eating today. I don't know if you're not eating today. What are you doing? So I asked him, what would be easier for you to remember? If I'm going to eat every other day, is it the even days or the odd days? What would help you? Because he's a food pusher and a food enabler. And I'm going to tell you, if he's cooking, he's trying to get me to taste everything he cooks. And so I'm like, just you tell me what will help you help me, you know, <laughs> like that old Jerry Maguire, help me help you, right? So he said that for me to eat on the odd days would help him and fast on the even days. I said, fine, that's what I'll do. So that is what I did this week. On the odd days, which was Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, I had some food. And on the even days, I fasted. So this week I fasted three days and usually I'm doing, I, I try to close my window by 6 p.m. That's what my goal has been. So what I did is I ate January 1st, Monday, and by 6 p.m. stopped eating. After that, it was just black coffee. Yeah, guys, I, I'm starting to make myself do the black coffee again. I had slipped off of that and started putting, you know, heavy whipping cream back in my coffee and, um, whatever else, you know, it was just whatever I could find this, the half and half, you know, I was doing all that with my black coffee all probably the last four or five months. So this week going back to just plain black coffee, ugh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it, but I'm making myself do it. I know my taste buds will finally get there, but just do it. So it's been black coffee, water, I've been actually doing the, the sparkling waters. Those seem to really help the fizziness, the bubbleness. That really helps a little bit, especially during this first week. First week or two is the worst when you are trying to do any kind of long fast. Absolutely the worst. I know this. With me done fasting in the past, um, as a matter of fact, Ariel and I did a 72-hour fast like the third week of December, like right before Christmas, mainly because I knew I was going to start doing this again, and I just wanted to see if I could do it. And I actually did it. It wasn't easy at all, but I did it. And so I was like, okay, if I can complete a 72 hour fast right before the Christmas holidays, I can get back to ADF in January. So that is, it was sort of like a little test that I did to see if I was going to be able to actually do this. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I'll close my window at 6 PM and that's what I did Monday night. And I fasted all through Tuesday and then Monday comes around. I'm trying not to open my window, window sorry, on um, Wednesday until around 10. I'm trying to give myself like an eight hour window or less, depending on how I feel. If I'm not hungry at 10, I'm not eating yet. Um, I'm trying to break my fast with protein. So I did up some boiled eggs this week. I actually had some um, pepperoni wrapped in, wrapped around mozzarella cheese that I broke my fast with this week. One day I broke it with a big old Caesar salad. You know, that's not really protein, but that's what I had in the house. It was my first day of breaking the fast. And I was like, I've got to have something now. <laughs> so I just did a big old gigantic bowl of Caesar salad. And that's what I broke my fast with. But the next day it was, uh, next um, feast day, I did protein. So I'm trying to break it with protein. And I'm not limiting myself. Just like before, on my one meal a day, whatever I want to eat is what I eat. So I ate till I got full. And then if I wanted a little bit of something right before my window closed, I think both the last two feast days, I've closed my window with some chocolate ice cream. At 5.30, I'd get me a bowl of chocolate ice cream and then I'm calling it done. And cut my window, shut that window down, and at 6 p.m., started fasting again. And that is what I have been doing. Today is a fast day, so I shut my window down at 6 last night and I've had nothing but water today. So that is how this week has gone as far as the eating and fasting. Um, what happened on the scale? Guys, I told y'all, I never wanted to see that two in front of my number again. And that, it just horrified me. And my scales had broke. I knew I was gaining, I felt it. So when I got on the scale last weekend, um, it wasn't pretty. Um, I think last Friday I had seen like a 208 and then we had New Year's and we went out and celebrated and had food and drank and blah, blah, blah. And when I got on the scale Monday morning, I was 
four. Yeah, 210.4. Almost back up there to one of my heaviest weights. You know, I like, so for some reason, my body likes the 230 mark, you know, and it's hung at 230 a lot over my, my uh, years. So I was horrified. I was like, no, 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 <laughs> I'm not doing this again. So this week through all the fasting and um, trying to get back into exercise on January 1st, on Monday, I did my annual every year um, half marathon in Kingwood and uh, just walked it. I, I'm not running right now, guys. I literally can physically not run a half marathon right now. I'm too heavy. I'm, I'm not in shape enough. So I'm walking. Took me four hours to walk it. Yeah. Where last May, I ran one at 257. Yeah. I, I'm really, I'm trying not to beat myself up too bad, but I've really been hard on myself these last few months. So um, I did my half marathon on Monday. And then a couple days throughout the week, I went out and just walked a little mile or so. Jeff actually has gone with me and walked a little bit. We're going to try to start walking together a little bit in the evening. So Maybe he's trying to get on board a little bit, you know, he's trying, but I just didn't feel really, didn't feel really supported last week. Um, and then yesterday, Sunday at a 40 hour fast, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at my fast that morning before the race to so just see how, how fasted I was 40 hours fasted. I went with a friend of mine and we walked slash jogged. When I say jogged, it was like we would jog from this red cone to that red cone, which would end up being about 40 steps. And then we would walk four or five cones. And then we would jog again from this cone to this cone. And you know, that's how I started out running the last time. I would jog from one mailbox in my neighborhood to the next mailbox. And then I would walk until I could catch my breath. And then I would jog from one mailbox to another mailbox. So it's slow and easy. So all this journey is about starting out slow and easy and progressing. So we walked jog a five mile race yesterday, completely fasted. It took us an hour and 18 minutes when I completed the race, totally fasted. And after the race, they had a um, bacon, egg and cheese, like breakfast burrito type thing. And so I broke my fast with that at 41 ish, almost 42 hours. It might've been about 42 hours. Anyways, uh, that's how I broke my fast yesterday at nine in the morning. So, um, after all that little bit of exercise throughout last week, the weight did come down this week. I lost to my scale this morning was 204.4. So that is a total of six pounds this week. We all know the first week is water weight. Absolutely. And I always know, even remember watching The Biggest Loser, the first week they dropped tons of weight. The next week it was very, very little. So if you go into the week two and don't lose that much weight or none at all, or even gain a pound, don't freak out. Your body's just trying to figure out what you are doing. But six pounds this week, 204.4. My goal is before we leave for Hawaii on the 17th, I'm hoping and praying to be back under two by then um, as much as I can be. Because that number is just Mm, 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 mm. after losing the weight last year and getting down to 170, I thought I was so far away from that number, I'd never see it again. Uh, it's heartbreaking, but it's okay. It's okay. We're going to get there again. So there's what happened this week. Six pound weight loss. I'm happy with that. And I want to keep on doing ADF this week and see how things go. I will check in with you guys next Monday. I believe it's a holiday for us, so it shouldn't be too difficult for me to get a video up, right? The following week, I will be in Hawaii actually flying home on Monday, so the video that week will be a little bit late, but we'll talk about that next week. Anyways, that's what happened this week. Quick, maybe it's not so quick, <laughs> not really a quick recap, but we're starting out fresh. Got to get a little more into it at the first part of the year. <laughs> and um, just on a total opposite, separate note, not anything to do with weight loss. Um, I know a lot of you guys follow me all last year and kept up with my family and things that were going on. And you remember my mother-in-law passed in September of 2022. Well, my father-in-law ended up passing December 28th of 23. So we have had three deaths in that side of the family in the last three years. We just buried Papa this past Friday, um, January 5th. So um, my prayer warriors out there, just keep a, a little prayer out there for my family because some of them are, are really dealing with it hard. Um, I didn't expect him to last long after my mom passed. You know, they'd been married 65 plus years, 67, whatever it was. Long, long time. Um, so I, I really didn't expect him to hang on as long as he did. But um, he's finally with her now and 
they're they're both together again. So just want to throw that in. Oh gosh, ending the video on a sour note, but it, it's really not. I mean, he he had dementia. He had you know a lot of struggles, and it was to the point where he wasn't even recognizing my ex husband anymore sometimes. So you know he he's at peace now. He's not in pain or suffering anymore. But he was happy through his last few days. You know he stayed with my um, my kid's dad, and they took really good care of him. I mean when he took him after mama passed. I mean, they, they plumped him up. I mean, he gained like 20 pounds and he was very frail. I was like, wow. So, <laughs> so he, he, he did well <laughs> this past year. He ate well. <laughs> um, so just, um, like I said, any of you guys just want to throw that in to let y'all know. So we've, we've had a lot of craziness this week. You know, I'm starting back on a weight loss journey, lost my father-in-law, you know, not having any support at home. It has been a rough first week, I guess, now that I'm looking back on it to actually jump back in. But this is how life goes, guys. So if if you're thinking that you're not going to make it through because fasting is hard or if you're doing 16-8 just trying to get through the one day, things are going to happen. Stuff is going to come at you. And if you fall off the wagon today, just start over tomorrow. But each day, try to strive to do a little better. You know, we will end up getting there sooner or later. It just takes time. So with all that said, I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'm going to go feed the chickens, get my chores done around here. And guess what? First day back to work, sister girl's going to go take a nap before I have to go back and see my babies this afternoon. <laughs> I'm going to get back in my routine of nap taking. <laughs> all right, guys. Y'all have a great day, and I will check in with you guys next week and let y'all know how I did. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.